Look, this is, again, possibly the big problem for the Liberal Party, and that is how do you balance the competing demands of rural conservatives and urban moderates? And this is this piece of legislation sums up that problem for the government perfectly, which is why they would much rather kick the can uh, along the road and not have this become a fight in budget week. So, um, yeah, look, you know, they will take it to the election if the Liberals get their way, and I can't see how they won't get their way. Quite aside from this particular issue, though, whether, you know, it's something that the Liberals primarily could be supporting or not. I've never understood that. I would have thought politically, if you think that it's a powerful thing or you believe in it, I don't see the harm in losing a vote, particularly a Senate vote, which I think is for a as well, and then saying, you know what, we now have clear contrast. They seem to be more from that as often as they can. All right, and the other, um, Dick Kevin, who's thrown in the ring, I guess, happened when uh, the Senate vote was the reader, down in the tourism the Paris commitment came up. Now, Tony Abbott has had three positions on the Paris commitment. Are you he sure it's only three? Yeah, <laughs> no, well, only three? I've got three. You can add to them. He, he, he put Australia into the Paris commitment, right? As Prime Minister, it was his idea. Then he withdrew his support for that when Malcolm Turnbull became Prime Minister because... Mm -hmm. We'll get to that. Mm -hmm. And then this week, he's back in now. Um, Cue videotape. <laughs> I think that uh, the government has lost its emissions obsession um, now that Angus Taylor is the energy minister. So I don't think it is now necessary, but I certainly do think that it's important that we get more baseload power into the system okay, and do it as quickly let's as possible. Let's try and get a straight answer here. Should we be in Paris or not? I'm not calling for us to pull out now. But you were? Yep. But now you're not. Circumstances have changed. And what's the change? We've got a new Prime Minister and a new Energy Minister. So when Malcolm Turnbull was Prime Minister, we should get out of Paris? We had an emissions obsession that needed to be broken. Mm. Oh. Mm. <laughs> the little own undiagnosed, previously undiagnosed condition. By the way, the Treasurer is one of those who had well, that emissions well, obsession. Well, also known as Malcolm Turnbull. Exactly, <laughs> exactly. Also known as Malcolm Turnbull. I mean, but, uh, the, look, Peter's got to explode. We, we need to give him the floor. We, we got rid of our uh, emissions obsession is his line. The person that was the energy minister is now the deputy leader and yeah, treasurer of the party. Even just take one step back, mate. <laughs> like, the target, when Abbott presided over the cabinet decision to set that target for Paris, is 26%. When Malcolm Turnbull was the prime minister, 26%. Now, still, 26%. We've lost our emissions obsession but the target is exactly the same. The all... target has remained the same throughout. So what exactly is this emissions obsession? Sarah is absolutely 100% correct. But look, country, what does it expose? What does it expose when it protects itself in that way? It, ex and it exposes his obvious loyalty of how to get rid of his living cost and now he's just breaking the hobby seat. I mean, he's doing this to try to hold Moringa. He is prepared to, if you like, try to survive on his knees rather than dying with dignity on his feet, standing by his previous position. I think it also shows, sorry, I think it also shows that energy policy, which we still have to keep on, 